so far so good, but I'm getting that. Caution, make sure to use supported cables. Which I am. Anyone know why this keeps popping up? This is my first ultra wide and I am beyond impressed with the level of immersion of this display. One thing that I did not expect to like was the HDR400 performance of this monitor. A lot of people think that you need 1000 nits for true HDR, but this display gets bright enough for my eyes, a must have for content creators and gamers. Screen has great color and loads of adjustment, adaptive sync works right out of the box. No dead, stuck pixels. OSD has a lot of adjustments. Only issue I have is the back light bleed. Screens attached are at the default 50 brightness. Of course the pictures are worst case. In the pictures I moved my mouse cursor close to where it's mostly unnoticeable since my crummy phone camera exaggerates it. I use a brightness of 30 but it's still noticeable in games. Not as much as all black screen, but still there. Would return to try another but they've been out of stock just like the 850. G-Sync compatibility worked flawlessly and the colors are great. Minimal backlight bleed, IPS glow. Stand is a little cheap and doesn't go as low as I'd like, but minor complaint. So I just got my new LG 34GN850B. I was running ultrawide before, with an older LG that was only 2560 by 1080 This new one is so much better. 1080p to 1440p, way better colors, much better response time, HDR 400, nicer curve screen, just overall a great upgrade. I've tried a number of games including Doom Eternal, Rage 2, Far Cry 5, Forza Horizon 4, Crackdown 3, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Dirt Rally. Doom Eternal is actually quite amazing and HDR seems to work. Granted, I know this set is only HDR 400, which some people say is useless, but I've dropped around 30 hours on this game with my old monitor and I can see a noticeable improvement. Far Cry 5 supports HDR but the effect is much more subtle. I had to switch it on and off a few times, HDR is better, but it is not a huge difference like Doom. Rage 2 doesn't support HDR but still looks way better, maybe due to 10-bit color, it was just a richer image. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was also amazing with full ultra settings RTX shadows and HDR. Not sure how much HDR is doing, but overall this game looked like it was next gen compared to my old kit. I think a lot of this was just the resolution bump, but also the better color. Both Crackdown and Forza support HDR but honestly it was hard to say it was doing anything, but the games both looked very good in any case, so I won't complain. Also, I am running this with a 2080T so performance was really good, around 90 to 120 FPS in all the games. Besides the look of it, the response time is very good, maybe not the advertised 1 millisecond but still nice. Even at lower FPS, the monitor felt smooth and responsive, way more than my old set, which kind of have a double image issue when turning or panning very fast. It's still not quite TN level, but for an IPS this may be one of the best. 160Hz overclock was no problem, but you can't do RGB 10-bit and 160Hz at the same time. Since 144Hz is still a lot, I have turned off the overclock so I can use 10-bit color. Though both options are hard to tell, I'd rather have better color since most games are capping out at 120fps anyway. There were no QC problems, zero dead pixels, no bleed at all. So overall I am very happy with the monitor.
It includes many quality of life improvements coming from a 1080p set, and hits a nice balance of features and quality. I was considering the more expensive HDR1000 kits, and I am sure the HDR is better, but I think I made a good choice here. The IPS panel is amazing, very little ghosting or any other problems like that, nice clean picture. And the HDR400 actually does something. It's not mind-blowing, but it is noticeably better in some games and a worthwhile bonus feature if you are already buying this monitor for the other reasons. Coming from another great ultrawide monitor, the ASUS PG348Q, 100Hz, I wasn't expecting to be as impressed as that first initial jump from a regular 16 to 9 ratio to the ultrawide master race. After you get over the whole, wow factor, of being completely enveloped in uninterrupted screen real estate, you settle down to your senses and begin nitpicking. Click link in description for more reviews.